Hello, my name's Sarah and this video has been produced to support GCSE Triple Science. This uh, video clip is going to be showing you how to carry out an investigation into the use of an immobilised enzyme compared to using a free enzyme. If you're teaching uh, GCSE Triple Science and your exam board is Edexcel, then this is a core practical from Biology Unit 3. The core practical is titled are immobilised enzymes less affected by temperature? We're specifically looking at lactase enzyme. There is a PowerPoint presentation that you can use with students to introduce this topic and you can find it uh, by following the link to Triple Science from the Kent Science Resource Centre website. The first part of this video is aimed at technicians as it shows how to make up the sodium alginate solution. If your wonderful technicians will be supplying you with this ready made, then you can skip forward by two minutes to the equipment. So this investigation calls for 2% sodium alginate solution. We're going to make up 100 ml, so we need to dissolve 2 grams of sodium alginate and make up to 100 ml using warm distilled water. This will give you enough solution for 12 sets, as each group of students will need 8 ml of sodium alginate. Warm up approximately 75 ml of distilled water. We used a kettle to heat until not quite boiling. You need to sprinkle the alginate into the warmed water, because if you add it too quickly, it can clump together and take longer to dissolve. Then, if you have a magnetic stirrer, set this up and leave it to dissolve for about half an hour. Some technicians prefer to leave it on overnight. If you don't have a magnetic stirrer, then you will have to stand and stir it. You sometimes need to turn the stirrer off briefly and break up any stubborn lumps with a spatula. Once all the alginate has dissolved, you can add more distilled water to make up to 100 ml in a volumetric flask. Your sodium alginate solution is then ready to be used in the investigation. So the equipment that you will use, fresh milk, lactase enzyme, this will break down the lactose in the milk into glucose and galactose, 2% sodium alginate solution and 1.5% calcium, calcium chloride solution. These are used to make the beads which will immobilise the enzyme. Semi-quantitative glucose sticks, we're using dye sticks. These are to test to see if the enzyme has broken the lactose in the milk down. You will also need a 10ml measuring cylinder, a 100 and a 250ml beaker, a glass stirring rod, a 10ml plastic syringe, a tea strainer or sieve, four boiling tubes, water baths set at 30, 40, 50 and 60 degrees centigrade and a stopwatch. First then, we're going to make the immobilised enzyme. Measure 8 ml of sodium alginate solution. And place it in your 100 ml beaker. Then you need 2 ml of the lactase enzyme. Obviously, if students are using the same measuring cylinder, you need to make sure that they are rinsing them out thoroughly between use. Mm -hmm. 
add your enzyme to the sodium alginate solution. and mix them together. Pour 100 ml of calcium chloride solution into a 250 ml beaker. Draw the enzyme alginate mixture up into a 10 ml syringe. Add the enzyme alginate mixture to the calcium chloride one drop at a time. When the sodium alginate comes into contact with the calcium chloride, the sodium is replaced by calcium ions, which form insoluble calcium alginate. You can see small beads forming. These calcium alginate beads contain the lactase enzyme, so the enzyme has now been immobilised. Leave the beads in the calcium chloride for a few more minutes to harden. Meanwhile, you can test a sample of milk for glucose using a glucose test strip. You can cut these strips in half to, econ to economise. and you should find that milk does not contain any glucose. You can now rinse your beads to remove any excess calcium chloride. Tap water is fine. You are now ready to compare your immobilised enzyme with free enzyme at a range of different temperatures. Place your alginate beads containing your immobilised enzyme into a boiling tube. Measure 2 ml of lactase enzyme, this will be your free enzyme, and place it into a boiling tube. Measure 5 ml of milk into another two boiling tubes. Remember, if students are using the same measuring cylinder for enzyme and milk, they must make sure they wash it out each time. Place all four boiling tubes into a water bath at 30 degrees centigrade and leave them for five minutes to come up to temperature. After five minutes, Add one of the milk samples to the free enzyme and the other milk sample to the immobilised enzyme. Leave the tubes in the water bath and set your stopwatch for another five minutes. After five minutes, remove your samples from the water bath and test each one for glucose. These glucose testing sticks are read at exactly 30 seconds, so students should use their stopwatch. The presence of glucose at this stage will indicate that the lactase enzyme has broken down the lactose in the milk into glucose and galactose. 
This shows that glucose is present in the milk with the free enzyme and you will also find glucose present in the milk with the immobilised enzyme. However, there is more glucose present in the milk with the free enzyme. Students could discuss this with, re with reference to the easier movement of the free enzyme and therefore possibly greater availability of active sites. And here you can clearly see the greater amount of glucose present with the free lactase. OK, the key teaching point from this investigation comes at this point. You can now wash your beads and use them again to investigate another temperature. Highlight to students that the immobilised enzyme can be used again and again, whereas the free enzyme can only be used the once. You should find that the free enzyme is less stable, and therefore more affected by temperature than the immobilised enzyme. We found that the free enzyme was denatured above 60 degrees centigrade, whereas the immobilised enzyme continued to work up to about 80 degrees. There is, however, a problem with this investigation as it has been described. We have found that even with very thorough rinsing of the beads, traces of glucose remained on them. This meant that milk with the immobilised enzyme added continued to test positive for glucose well above temperatures at which the enzyme should have been denatured. You can discuss this with students and ensure that they wash their beads as thoroughly as possible between each use. You could also point out to students that when the amount of glucose produced with the immobilised enzyme falls to a very low amount, this may be from contamination of the beads rather than in any ongoing activity from the enzyme itself.